When you design your websites with Divi, do you, for example, come over here to the fonts and then uh, select your font from here while you're designing your website? Or if you want to work with color, is this where you do all your main color management right here on your color palette? Well, if that's the case, you're doing it wrong. And doing it this way, you're going to have inconsistent websites and the websites you're going to build are going to be very difficult to maintain because you are going to be forgetting things as you're designing your website. For example, let's say you come over here and you set your size for your font here and perhaps you're working with another module, you change your font over there. Can you see how in two days, if you come back, you're going to forget what font you've been using around unless you write it down on a notebook? Well that whole process of designing websites is not the correct way of designing websites using Divi. I have a much better way, which is very, very easy to use and very scalable. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use color and fonts correctly in Divi. But for this example, I'm using my framework. It's called Site Crafter. It enables you to design consistent looking websites by having key elements all set up for us ahead of time. So let's start off with document number one. Every website needs to have a style guide. You need to have an idea of what sort of colors you're using on your website. So for example, here, I've got my style guide. I have my brand color. I have my action color. This is where I add my, all my call to actions. I also have the colors to my headings, colors to my text. I also have my base colors. Now these ones here, we don't really have to use them, but if you have a website which uh, shows some errors or some warning or some information, then these are the colors you need to use. Now these are uniform across uh, any color palette, so you don't need to go in and play around with these. And we also have our headings here, they're all set. So over here in Divi specifically, we also have our presets. So you need to have an idea of the sizes of things and how things are looking on your website. So this is a reference document which needs to be on your website. So if you're working with a client, you need to be able to show them like, hey, look, this is our heading size and uh, our colors are going to look like this. Is this what you wanna go with? If you wanna make some tweaks, you can do some tweaks. Okay, let's dive in now and let me show you how to do a mini rebrand. So what we're gonna do is we have existing colors right now, as you can see. So I want to change this main page here and do a mini rebrand. And what you're going to notice is an easy flow of things because the process that I'm going to show you is amazing. All right, so let's start off with creating all our colors. So I use a tool called coolers.co. Uh, so here, I've gone ahead quickly and just created some colors. So this main color here is going to be my brand color, okay? So this is going to work as my brand color. So what I'm going to do now is to copy this color like that and then we are going to open a new tab and I'm going to show you where all these colors go because a lot of people, and in fact, including me, I used to do this the wrong way all along. So I'm just gonna go to my dashboard here and then I'm going to show you exactly where these colors go and how you should apply them. All right, so what we wanna do is to come over here to appearance and then click on customize, okay? It's important we do all the settings here, not in the actual builder itself, okay? So here's where we need to do to uh, add all our changes. So I'm gonna come over here to my general settings and we're gonna start off with layout settings, okay? This is where we adjust our primary color. So we're gonna click here and I'm gonna paste my color like that and I'm just gonna click away, okay? This is the main color that I've just copied and pasted. This now is going to be my action color. So all my call to actions are going to have this color. So I'm gonna click here and copy the color like that, come back over here. This time I'm gonna go into my secondary color. So all you need to remember here is your primary color is your main brand color. Your secondary color is your call to action color. Okay, I'm gonna paste it like that. And now I'm pretty much happy with my colors. I'm gonna hit publish. Okay, so with this color selected, I know that it's going to be used later on. So I'm gonna go back over here to my layout settings go to typography. Now here we also need to do some settings, okay? It's very important that we set everything here. So we're gonna start off with our heading color. So for this branding exercise, we're gonna keep things very simple. We are going to just choose a gray, and usually you, I mean, you don't go wrong with this, okay? 
Oops, okay, here's where I need to be. All right, so we're gonna use a dark gray for this, okay? So you can drag your slider here and choose the gray you wanna go with. Let's go with 42, 42, 42, okay? Next, we also need to set our text color. So we're gonna scroll down here and here is our text color. Select that and again, I wanna go with a gray. I'm gonna drag all the way down here and now you see we have a 4C, 4C, 4C. I'm gonna keep things very simple here. I'm gonna go with, uh, yeah, let's go with 35, 35, 35. I mean, there's no set rule. You can just eyeball this and just look at um, your colors and how, and you know, how it looks, okay? Okay, so in most cases, even if you go online right now, you'll find that majority of websites, when it comes to the text, they pretty much use the grays, okay? This is the much, much easier way to play around with colors. Otherwise, if you start introducing crazy colors, you're going to get complicated unless you know what you're doing. All right, so I've set that. So here we have our link color. So again, uh, I'm going to come to my color palette here. Now, I know this color is going to be light uh, on my site. So I'm just going to copy and paste it for now like that. And then if I need to change it, I'm going to go in and change it. So this process needs to be done only once, okay? And this is the amazing part. All right, so now I have my link colors, I have my body text color, I have my heading text color. I'm gonna hit publish. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, so where are these colors on our color palette? Well, let me show you. Now remember this page that I opened up, if I save this and refresh it like that, we are now going to see all these colors over here on the global. And these are the first four colors, okay? Oops, did something happen here? Okay. Let me get out of this and then come back in. I think it's just a caching problem. Let me refresh this because the colors are supposed to update. All right, but remember also we're using DV, uh, DV5 alpha. Okay, so let's go in and it looks like our colors haven't updated yet, which is strange. So let me just go back and let me just check something quickly. Okay, just gonna refresh this as well. Okay. So now that I have uh, set my colors here, let's take a look at our global colors because these are the four colors that update your primary color, the secondary color, the heading text color, and the body text color. These are the main colors that change when you update the color palette. And then over here now, this is where you have those four colors that we spoke about. Now these you can manually add them in, your warning colors, your information colors, and so on. Now let's head over here and uh, get out of the saved colors. So the colors that we need to add now are our base colors. Okay, so to add our base color, we need to come over here to Divi. We're gonna come all the way to theme options. All right, so you see these colors that we have here, we need to override them. So the first one here is white because white is always going to be a color on our website. So we're gonna come back to our color palette. So this is the color that I'm going to use as my base. So I'm gonna click over here and choose these different shades. So I'm gonna get a few light ones here and then I'm gonna get a few dark ones. So I'm gonna start off with, uh, you can see this one here is white, so I'm gonna start off with this one. I'm gonna go in and copy that, like that. And then I'm gonna come back, paste the first one. I'm gonna move on to number three, come back over here, click on my shades, go on to number three, copy that, come back over here and add it. And like I said, the, these, are, uh, these colors are added just a few times and pretty much after that you're good to go because they follow you wherever you go in your, uh, in your builder. Okay, so this is the color number three. I'm gonna go in and copy that. I'm gonna come over here and paste that. Right, so the next colors I'm going to add are the, dark, uh, the darker versions, okay? So these ones, you can use them, let's say if you want to have a dark footer, for example, this is where you'd go in and do this. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna start off with this one right here, smoky black and copy. Come back over here and we're gonna paste that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So always uh, remember to uh, click on, oops, to uh, click on the right uh, item. So here I'm gonna copy. Yeah, you need to click on the right color. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you're gonna have colors that are all over the place. I'm gonna paste that and then I wanna move on to the third one. Again, we're gonna go to our scale. This is number three. I'm gonna copy that and Paste it, okay, and then we're gonna add the final color and let's go with this one here as the final one. Copy that and pretty much I'm good to go. I'm going to, did I select it? 
No, okay, there we go. All right, so this is going to work as my base color, but if you want to go grayscale, you can also do grayscale for your base colors. That works fine too. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead now and save changes, and pretty much I am good now. All my colors are now saved. So what we're gonna do next is to now go in and start applying our colors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to work with my sections here so we can see we have this color that we have here. I don't like that. So I'm gonna go in and, oops, I need to save this and refresh. It doesn't have it automatically. So uh, it's good that I'm doing this uh, live and you can see I haven't done any editing. So you might fall into the same mistake. And this is how you'd want to fix the problem. Okay, so I've refreshed that. So now if I go back, we should be able to see our color palette and you can see here it, is, it has updated. All right, so we're gonna start off with uh, the background. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add this color here as my background. And now do you see that just by doing that, things are already starting to change. All right, so next I'm gonna come on to uh, my blurb here. And this time I need to sort out the border. So I'm gonna scroll down here and find the border. Oops, I'm supposed to be in the design tab. I'm still trying to get the uh, my hang around this, you know? Right, so we're gonna scroll down here and let's find the border. So we need to go with, oh, this is the icon, sorry. We need the border. So it's somewhere down here. So yes, right here. Okay, so for our border now, you can see it's set at two pixels. So I'm just gonna add my color like that. And you can see now this has already, you know, updated and it's starting to take shape. So I'm not sure what preset I set this to, so I can now go in, come over here to my presets. So you can see here I'm on default preset. So uh, right now it's uh, SK main blurb. So now I just need to update this one, click on yes, and now they've all updated. So do you see how easy it is? I mean, in this branding exercise, how you can just go in and start changing your colors. It's that easy, okay? All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna save that. So the next step now is perhaps maybe we want to work with our fonts. Now, how do we update all our fonts? Because so far, I mean, you can see how the color works. So with the fonts now, we go to the same place, theme options, and then let's head over to appearance and then we're gonna go to customize. All right, so let's start off with general settings and what we need here is typography. So again, do you notice that I'm not in the actual builder itself to change all my text? No, I'm actually working with a system which uh, is going to allow us to have consistency throughout. So here now, for my headings, uh, we can change all our headings here. You can see header font, it's set to Poppins. So let's choose something different. Let's go with uh, Playfair Display, all the way down here to MNOP. Uh, I wish we could just search for the font here, because sometimes, okay, sometimes I miss it, and it's just frustrating if you are trying to build um, something fast. Okay, boom, okay, so that's gonna be our main heading. And you can see right away, it has updated. Look, it's updated there. So everywhere where there's a heading, it's gone in and updated it. You see that? So we, ideally, we want this set to bold. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is where you do all your adjustments. Uh, let's see, fair play display. Okay, this one just goes caps, I don't know why. So maybe let's not work with that one. Let's keep this one here activated. All right, so we're gonna use that as our main one. So something happened here. It looks like our color wasn't updated here. So let's just go in and fix that. I've just noticed that. So we're gonna drag this all the way down here so we can get our grayscale. So now that I have that, I'm gonna hit publish, okay? Right, so we've changed our headings. The next step now is to change our body text because perhaps maybe you don't, know, you don't wanna use pop-ins. So for our normal text now, you can see here it says header font. Yeah, we've just done that. Why has it gone back to regular? We want it on bold. Is this my computer? What, is, what the hell is going on? Anyway. Body font, let's use something like Monster Rat. Okay, so M-N-O Monster Rat. There we go. I'm gonna select that and that's gonna be our body font. So it's currently set to thin. So you may want to go regular and save. Something is happening. It's like I'm selecting the right thing here and I'm seeing something different here. This is probably because this is still in beta. So it doesn't mean that you know the whole process is all broken. No, it's probably because this is in beta and this is why these things haven't been ironed out yet. But if I was doing this on DV4, then I mean, we wouldn't have any problems. I've done it before and that's the process that I use to uh, design my site. So once, oops, 
once this is stable, then, you know, everything's going to be good. Anyway, so I've gone in and I've uh, set all this up. Okay, so now let's see what happens to my presets. Okay, let's refresh this. Okay, that's great news because now I can see that this has been applied across the whole website. So my, my headings are done, my body text is done, and everything looks great. So what I want to do now is to just make sure that this here is set to regular because right now it doesn't look like it's on regular it looks like it's on thin okay that's medium <laughs> i saw a change there uh let's head over back to our style guide no onto our presets this is the page which you know you get to see how things look okay maybe it prefers to be on on that setting so this is much much better it's much easier to read and everything looks great now you may be thinking well what if I need to change the sizes? This is a very good question because when you look at this, this has uh, fluid fonts, okay? You don't have to go in and specifically change the sizes, even for the headings, the paragraph text or anything. This is using fluid typography and this is achieved by using clamp, CSS clamp. So what I need to do now is to show you where you go and do these adjustments. So I'm just gonna go back here, back, and we're going to come over here to additional CSS. Right, do you see that? This is where everything is. So for our heading one, you'll notice that font size clamp, 3.5 rem, and then the, uh, the, the biggest here is six rem. So if you feel like, well, that's a bit slow, small, you can come over here, uh, maybe perhaps add eight as the biggest, okay, on the uh, headings. You hit publish. Now let's go to our presets and now you see it's gone bigger, okay? But if we now start making this window smaller, do you see that the heading one is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? Yeah, that is because it's fluid and it's using clamp. So this is where you'd come in and make your adjustments. Now you could also use a clamp calculator. So you could go into a clamp calculator, you go in there and set all your sizes and then just copy all that and paste it back in here. Now I am going to be doing a uh, in-depth tutorial showing you how to make these minor adjustments uh, just to make your website look much, much better. And it's more streamlined. So if you come, let's say months later or your clients, that you've been designing a website for comes after let's say two months, three months, and they want to make some changes to their website. Do you see now how easy it is to go to specific places on our website in this design flow to actually achieve a cohesive website, which is very easy to maintain. All you need to do is to come over here and make all your changes there. And it is very, very easy to use. So as you can see, this is uh, much, much better to do. Now to achieve this, I am using uh, SiteCrafter. This is a design system, a design framework that makes the designing of uh, websites faster and more consistent. And as you can see here, I haven't gone in and uh, made changes into each and every uh, module for the text or for the size or for the color. It's all done in one place. And not only that, you might be thinking that this framework is only uh, taking care of this alone. No, 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 no it also bring, comes in with a footer templates all done for you. It's, I mean, it's got a lot inbuilt. I also have some other videos that I've uh, recorded. Go ahead and check them out if you wanna find out how amazing SiteCrafter is and how it can make the designing of websites much, much easier. Anyway, guys, I know this is a quick video, but I am going to be doing a complete course on uh, SiteCrafter, but I'm just a few updates from Elegant Themes uh, to make DV5, uh, alpha a bit more stable because right now we don't have presets so we have to go in and do things manually so yeah let's wait for that but if you purchase site crafter you you get um, the site crafter uh, version 5.3 which is what we're using right now and as you can see it's a bit buggy but you also get site uh, site crafter 4 which works on dv4 that one is solid, it's stable, you can use that. But I thought I'll just do this on DV5 so I can show you since DV5 is pretty much what everyone is waiting for. But like I said, go ahead, check out SiteCrafter. The link to that is in the video description below. There's a discount right now and time is running out. If you miss this, pretty much it's going to go back to the uh, normal price because right now it's on 50% off. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.